and uh, I welcome the opportunity to have a discussion on the public health restrictions and, and we're having this debate and, and this PMB is being tabled at a time when emergency legislation is being rammed through the Oireachtas uh, today and I think in the Shannon as well on, on Friday. It is absolutely unacceptable what we have seen over the last number of, of days, in fact uh, over the last number of weeks. Uh, two weeks ago the people of Ireland were expecting a plan from the Taoiseach. Uh, the hospitality sector was expecting a plan. The Taunishta or the Taoiseach took to a podium and essentially said, I'm sorry, the public health advice has only come in. We don't have a plan. We now have to go away. Give us a couple of weeks. We'll cobble something together and we'll come back. And the government have now come back. They have put a plan on the table. And I have to say the plan from my perspective is divisive it's discriminatory and it's unfair. And I think that's the context in which we're having this discussion uh, today. The public health advice was what it was, uh, and I was one of those that was at a briefing by the chief medical officer where he made it very clear that there was a number of assumptions that were being made about the spread of the, uh, the variant. I'm somebody who takes a very responsible approach to public health and have done since I took up my role as the opposition health spokesperson. I think we have to keep people safe and anything we do has to be with a view of opening any section of society as safely as we possibly can. And I've said this to the government time and again, that's what we need to do. But what we got from NEFID was modelling that did not factor in changes that were made to the vaccine rollout since. And I welcomed the changes because I had been calling on them for a number of weeks where young people would at least be offered the vaccine, uh, or at least some young people. We're told 300,000 doses of two vaccines will now be administered through pharmacies to young people, which is great. That's about 30% of all young people. By the end of this month, that will be done. We're now being told all of the over uh, 60s will have had their second dose. That reduces risk quite substantially. That needs to be built into revised modelling. Uh, we were told for a long time antigen testing wasn't a solution. A bit like uh, mandatory hotel quarantine, the government comes late in the day. Now it is a, a solution, it is a possibility, but we're not going to deal with it now. We'll deal with it down the road. We'll kick the can down the road, maybe in the autumn, despite all of the commentary and, in fact, very clear advice coming from the European Commission in relation to this and its widespread use in other European countries. So antigen testing is not perfect. It's not going to reduce all risk, but it reduces some risk. Again, a reduction in risk. We talked for some time about air filtration air ventilation systems. That's also been talked about by experts in this area and the sector as something that doesn't reduce all risk, but it reduces some risk. There's another ingredient that would make up the uh, possibility of a reopening. Then you look at what we did last summer. You have social distancing, you limit numbers at tables, and then you can begin to see what a plan to reopen safely for everybody would look like, and that's what should have happened. The government were very clear right through this process that they would not engage in what was seen as domestic uh, vaccine passports, and that's now where we've ended up. The Taoiseach and the Tarnish, they were at pains to point out that such a process would be unfair and discriminatory, and yet that's now what's being proposed. And I think it is deeply, deeply problematic. Uh, this motion is essentially uh, calling for hospitality to be uh, reopened. I support that, but I support it being reopened on a safe and a sound and sustainable basis. And I don't believe it was beyond us to come up with a plan. Now, the government will say, well, what about the public health advice? The public health advice, by the way, did not include under 18s being allowed into bars and restaurants. That was not part of any public health advice. Yet, the government uh, took a decision, that's what was needed, and they nuanced it because that was a way of reopening uh, hospitality. So if they've done it for the over 18s, the question then is why not for the over, or the under 18s, why not for the over 18s? And bizarrely, we now have a situation where if you're under 18 and you're waiting for your confirmation or communion, well, you can't have that. Uh, you can't be confirmed, you can't have your first Holy Communion, but you can go into a bar or a restaurant with family members who are vaccinated. And when you see these type of decisions that are being made that don't make sense to people, then people begin to question the whole approach. We're going to have a situation that will, as has been said, divide families, cause division, cause, I think, real problems, where a family goes on a staycation. There's a number of the children who are under 18 and a number of their children who are over 18. 
those who are over 18 and are not vaccinated, well, you can stay outside. If it's bad weather, tough look, stay at home, stay in, the rest, in your hotel, do something else. Those under 18, you can go with your family members. How is that fair? It isn't, of course, and that's going to be a problem. Those very same people who are over 18, by the way, a lot of them will be then asked to go back after their vacation or staycation uh, and uh, work in uh, bars and work in restaurants, pull the pints, serve the food, but they can't avail of any hospitality. It doesn't make sense. It clearly doesn't make sense. And anything that doesn't make sense is problematic. And if the government really believed in their plan and re really believed that this was the right thing to do, they would not be rushing it in the way that they are. 90 minutes of debate that we'll have today to table amendments on a bill of such fundamental importance. And I'm simply saying to the Minister, who is deputising obviously for the Minister for Health, that's unacceptable. The Health Committee yesterday was asked to waive pre-led scrutiny. So there's no pre-led pre scrutiny. Uh, there is very limited time in the Dáil for uh, debate. Over the last number of weeks, the Health Committee was looking to actually input into the process, to have discussions about antigen testing, to have discussions about ventilation, to have discussions about uh, uh, limiting numbers and uh, infection control and social distancing measures, as well as what impact will the accelerated vaccine rollout have. And we were told that the Department of Health wasn't the lead department. We were told it was the Department of Transport. We went to the Department of Transport. We were told it was the Department of Antishok. We go to the Department of Antishok. We're told, well, it's not us either. And then, lo and behold, a letter arrives from the Minister for Health to say, it actually is my department. And by the way, waive pre-led scrutiny. Don't worry about that. And we'll give you 90 minutes to discuss your amendments, which we're not going to accept anyway. It doesn't really matter what you propose. We're ramming this through anyway. And then we're expected, and we're being asked by the media, you're trying to hold up the reopening of hospitality. And we're being presented with this kind of fait accompli that the only option on the table is the government option. That is patently untrue. And I think that there are people in the media who need to be asking themselves questions in relation to that. That is not how it is. That is not the case. It is not as simple or is not as black as white uh, as uh, that. There are other ways to do this. There are better ways to do this. And I don't believe it was beyond us, as lots of European countries have done, in fact, the vast majority of European countries have done, to open up hospitality in a safe and sustainable way by putting in all of the mitigating factors I talked about. And looking at what we did last summer and what we, other countries are doing now which is to ensure that when we reopen, we reopen for everyone. The mantra at the start of this crisis is that we are all in this together. And let's be honest, when it comes to this government, we were never all in this together. But here we are now with a very clear message being sent to young people. We are most certainly not all in this together. You can stay outside the door. We have a plan that excludes huge amounts of people, and so be it. And I don't believe that's right. Gorham